The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take this Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Head stitching and stitching this year. Oh, it's the slow day and it's the slow night. Funniest thing I ever seen. Oh, Grandpa, I can't find it. I look just about every place. Can't find what, Luke? Well, the blue horse blanket you wanted. Well, it's right around the corner there on top of the toolbox where it's always been. Howdy, Grandpa. Luke. Hi, little Luke. Hi, little Luke. You see, Grandpa, there ain't nothing here in the toolbox but this coyote skin. Did you kill him? No, see, that's a coyote hide all right, Luke, but I never killed it. But I'd like to know where that blue horse blanket went. Well, maybe a coyote took it. Now, coyote wouldn't have no use for a horse blanket. <laughs> well, this one that got himself skin sure does. Nights get pretty chilly around here, you know. <laughs> you know what? I bet you Harry got it. Harry who? That little hermit fella? Uh-huh. Harry who? I heard he does things like that. Uh-huh. Harry who? <laughs> oh, excuse me, Grandpa. Did you say something? Oh, of course not. No, I'm just a flatty-faced old barn owl that stands here saying, Harry who? Harry who? <laughs> well, I was going to tell you about this Harry the Hermit fella. They call him Pack Rat Harry. He lives up in the hills, and he steals things and leaves other things in their place, like a pack rat. Well, if it's him, he's going to find out who he's a dealing with. Now, I got some milking to do. But from now on, we're putting our blankets under lock and key. Never seen the like of it. The blanket was practical new. Only had it about seven or eight years. <laughs> now, come on, bitch. I never lay my hands on that fella. I'll sure give it to him. Come on, give down now, Bessie. Quit holding back on me. You ain't been milked since yesterday. By Jingo, she's been drained. <laughs> Another one of these things, huh? Well, that thieving rascal. Now, let me see him try to take something around here. Get goofy traps all over the place. He comes tipsy toeing around, he's gonna be wham! I'm gonna get him. Grandpa, I don't see why you're making such a big fuss over a little bit of milk. And a six dollar horse blanket. But both times he left you something instead. I suppose you figure it's all right for a boy to come and take anything he wants, just so long as he leaves a, a couple of coyote hides, huh? Hey, Grandpa, we're we gonna play checkers, or ain't oh. we? in the coop with the chickens. He's coming. He's back again. Let's go, Grandpa. Now, you stay out of this now, you kids. This could be dangerous. Oh, gee. Now, take it easy, Grandpa. It could just be one of them coyotes. Yeah, well, whatever it is, it's had its last meal. Like him, all right. Pack right here. He got him by jingles. Now, 
How long did the sheriff say it would take him to get here, Kate? About 20 minutes. Grandpa, do you have to keep that gun pointed at him? Well, the poor man's half scared to death. Maybe you'll make a break for it. Oh, we don't do no such thing. You two get along, get to bed now. Oh, gee, Kate, do we have to? You heard, to bed. Come on, little Luke. Okay. Uh, how are things up in the hills? Poor man, I feel sorry for him. I wonder why he won't talk. He don't look to me like he's got all his marbles. Grandpa! That'd be the sheriff, Luke. It's about time he got here. Leave me in, will you? Sheriff, come on in. Evening, everybody. Uh, headquarters radioed a call, said you were having some trouble. Uh, yeah. Well, hello there, Harry. What are you doing here? We found him in our chicken house. You're stealing eggs. Well, I'm sorry about that, Mr. McCoy. It's the third time this month. Having a regular crime wave, huh? <laughs> well, a couple of people in the neighborhood didn't know about Harry. Called us up. He took some milk and butter. Left some turnips and corn. Guess them folks didn't like turnips. <laughs> What'd he leave you? Oh, some coyote skins. Yeah, and he took a six-dollar horse blanket and, and drained our cow. All right, Harry. You know you're not supposed to do none of this. I've told you time and time again. Now stop bothering people and go along home. Home? Ain't you going to arrest him? Well, no, I wasn't thinking about it. Oh, I never hear the like. Never. Here I catch a, a thief for you and you want to turn him loose. Well, I got no call to arrest Harry without a sworn complaint. Well, I've been a swearing and complaining here for the last ten minutes, ain't I? My God, it ain't really necessary to have Harry arrested, is it? Hey, maybe Kate's right, Grandpa. Maybe we ought to just uh, forget the whole thing. Forget it? Why, the next thing you want is to be paying him a reward for, uh, for stealing from us. <laughs> Now, look, I'm a law-abiding citizen to pay my taxes. When I catch a man busting into my house, I want him arrested. Now, I've seen my duty and I've done it. Now, I'm expecting you to do yours. Well, I got no choice if you feel that way, Mr. McCoy. Okay, Harry, better come along with me. going to dance, he's got to pay the fiddler. Come on, Luke, let's get back to our checky game. Oh, I'm kind of sleepy, Grandpa. I think I'll forget about checkers tonight. I think I'll turn in early myself. Night. Now, I'll be along in a minute, sugar babe. I'll lock up the door now. Morning. Morning, Morning, Grandpa. Grandpa. <laughs> Where's the kids at? They left for school just a few minutes ago. You never said goodbye. I never seen them go when I was out front. They, uh, they went out the back way. Best coffee, would you do? Well, go ahead and say what you want to say. But when a man's caught stealing, he should be put away. A few days in the poke, he'll learn him a good lesson. A few days? Luke, I think you better read this to Grandpa. Hermit to be held for observation. The Hermit of Chatsworth Hills, affectionately known as Pack Rat Harry, is to be held for possible commitment to a state mental institution after hearing by a psychiatric board. The hermit was arrested last night after a complaint of theft was filed by a farmer, Amos McCoy, who apprehended the hermit at gunpoint. The hearing will take place this afternoon at the psychiatric division of the Valley General Hospital. They're gonna lock him up like an animal. Take it easy, sugar babe. 
I'm sure they know what they're doing. If they put him in a hospital, they'll take real good care of him. But it's cruel. It's just plain cruel. Don't pay no mind, Luke. Women get churned up over things like that. Yeah. A, a good mess, a, a quick trout for supper. Get a mind off it. So go on, get your fish pole, and we'll, we'll go up and back of the hill to the, that new stream we've been going to try out, huh? I don't feel like going fishing. papers. signals change, I figured they'd let Harry out. You were a friend of his? Well, we're acquainted. And you know what happened. I better run this but, back up again or the boys will be giving out an alarm. But this... <laughs> Can you imagine anyone having old Harry arrested? Nice man like that. Never bothered anyone in his whole life. Just took care of his animals. Practically kept his whole area free of fires and coyotes single-handed. Yes, sir. Makes a mean, dried-up old buzzard like that McCoy fella do something like that, doesn't it? He just does, you know. Oh, I better take care of his skin is there and keep them for him. They're worth five dollars a piece. Five dollars a piece for coyote hides? State bounty. You know, he used to give away one of these just for a few cents worth of milk, butter, and eggs. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, ain't it? Maybe. Oh, Harry just doesn't believe in money. He wants to swap one thing for another. Oh, he sees to it that he gets the worst of the bargain, too. Yes, sir, I'd sure like to run across that McCoy fellow somewhere. <laughs> well, so long, mister. Very nice. Uh, say, I didn't catch your name. Smith. John Smith. Okay, Mr. Smith. Be seeing you. <laughs> Afternoon, Harry. Uh, does this patient have any relatives or a consulting physician present? Harry, we'd like you to understand that we're here to help you. Now, I've been informed by your ward physician that you've refused to speak to anyone. Is this true? Well, will you try to cooperate with us? We'd just like to ask you a few simple questions. Fine. All right, Harry, what is your family name? Well, Wilson, I think. How old are you? Pretty old. Well, would you say, uh, 50? 60? <laughs> 70. <laughs> Guess so. 
Who is the president of the United States? Don't he know? <laughs> what well, we know, Harry. Do you? But if I don't, does that make me crazy? No one said anything about your being crazy. The question is one of simple curiosity. Kill the cat. <laughs> we'll take the chance. Who is the president of the United States? Well, now, I just ain't sure. I thought so. Let me see. It was Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Addison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Buren, Harrison, Tyler, Polk, Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, McKinley, Roosevelt, Teddy, Taft, Wilson, Harden, Coolidge, Hoover, Roosevelt, FDR, Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy. I think. You certainly know your presence. Can you do it? I, uh, I don't think so. It's all right, son. It's all right. Uh, where do you live? Uh, Harry, where do you live? Huh? I asked you where you lived. Oh, up in the hill. This report says you were arrested for stealing. Is this true? I was arrested for swapping. I never took nothing I didn't give something for. It. Harry, uh, do you have any family or friends? Oh, I got a big family. Most people are my friends. Uh, most people. <laughs> if you have a family, why didn't they come here today so we could speak with them? They couldn't do that. No. Well, why not? What uh, sort of people are they? Well, uh, they ain't people at all. No, they ain't. They're dogs and cats, deers and squirrels, a few owls and rabbits, too. No, you couldn't talk to them. It took us years before we got to know each other. You, you talk with these animals? Well, sort of. Harry. We're interested in your welfare as a citizen of this state. In these times, it's unnecessary for a man your age to live the strange way you do. Well, I, I guess I am a mite touched at that, huh? Not at all. We just feel you'd be much better off in the care of the people of this state who are well equipped to, to look after you. You're doing right. Do you have an interest in this case? You go darn right I'm interested. I'm the fellow what had him arrested. Oh, I see. Uh, what is your name? My name's McCoy, Amos McCoy. And he stole my $6 horse blanket. And he drained my cow. And I think he should ought to be locked up. Mr. McCoy, there's no question of locking anyone up. Mr. Wilson will be looked after and supervised, that's all. Well, that's all right, just so long as a dangerous lunatic like him ain't a running loose no more. Mr. McCoy, Mr. Wilson is neither dangerous nor a lunatic. Now, look, just because he kills coyotes that drags away hard-working farmers' chickens and such like, that don't say he ain't loony. And when the state gives a $5 bounty for a coyote hide and he trades it for a pail of milk, now, if that ain't crazy, I don't know what is. Well, it may be unsound economics, but it's by no means psychotic. Now, if you don't mind. It ain't only that. He spends most of his time looking for fires. He's got a great tall flagpole. He runs flags up and down, giving signals to forest rangers when he sees a brush fire. Really? That's right. Now, look, if this man wants loony, he wouldn't be a running around trying to tell state forest rangers how to do their job, now, would he? Did you know these things about him? No, I certainly didn't. Harry, 
These things this man has just told us about you, are they true? Mr. McCoy, we should thank you. Yeah. Don't mention it. You <laughs> prevented us from making a grave mistake. It's possible that by denying Mr. Wilson the love and companionship of his family and friends, human and animal, we would be making psychologically and morally a serious error. You mean you ain't gonna lock him up? <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. Get enough meat and potatoes, Grandpa? One more bite and my, my eyeballs will get blown out. <laughs> I made something special for you, Grandpa. Apple crumb pie. Well, I guess you just have to go ahead and get blown out. <laughs> get in your slippers, Grandpa. Well, thank you, little Luke. See, that's really nice of you. What is this, my, my birthday or something? Did I forget? <laughs> no, Grandpa, no, we're just glad for what you did. I don't know what you're talking about, Luke. Oh, yes, you do, Grandpa. We're talking about the way you he helped Harry. Oh, that will not nothing. Let me ask you, Grandpa. What was it made you change your feelings about him? Oh, Luke, I, I got to you figuring just because a person gets off his rocker now and then, he, well, ain't no reason for to send him to prison at to one of them institutions. Because <laughs> if that was the case, I guess we all know a certain ornery old cussed would have been hauled away a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 